In this session, we are going to learn how to get data from a CSV file in JMeter or how to refer data from the CSV file. And this is going to be very easy, very interesting. And this is very important because in JMeter, in your testing, you will be required to get your test data from an external file like a CSV file. So let's get started. And here I'm on my JMeter. I'm going to create a new test plan. So I clicked here. I have a new test plan and I will do a right click add and here if you go to config elements you can see a lot of config elements here. So we have csv dataset config, http header manager and cookie manager, authorization, jdbc connection and so on. So in jmeter we have a lot of config elements and these config elements run before the sampler request at that particular level. For example if you add a config element at a test plan level, then it will run before any of the requests or samplers added at the test plan level. And today we are going to learn a very important config element that is CSV dataset config. So I will click here and it will add a CSV dataset config element here. And here we have the editor for CSV dataset config. So this is step number one. Let me say step number one is add CSV dataset config and let me increase the font size for you. So we have done step number one and step number two will be. So now I have added this CSV dataset config and now I need a CSV file that I will refer. So step number two will be create a CSV file and add data. So now I will go to my desktop. You can go at any location on your system and create a CSV file. Here I'm first going to create a text document that I can convert it into a CSV later. I will give it as a name, any name like data1 and I will change the extension to .csv and yes, now it is a CSV file and let me open this file and here I can add some data. Now, of course, you will add data as per your needs for your request. For this example, I'm adding some dummy data here. Let us say, I will say first name and I will say here last name. Uh, let me also increase the font. So I have created these two header for this two columns. Now, in case you want to refer the variable name or the header as a variable, from the CSV, you can give this headers or I will tell you later if you want to ignore them in the CSV or in the CSV dataset config. Let me add some values first here. I will say here, first name is Raghav and I will say Pal here. I will add some more data. I will say John Robling and I will say Graham Bell. So I have added some data here and now I can save and close this file. Now step number three will be we have done step number two and step number three is refer the CSV file in JMeters CSV dataset config. So I will go to my JMeter now. And here I have my CSV dataset config. Now you can give any name here. If you want to give any comments, you can give here. And here is where we will give our file path or we can also browse our file. So I will click on browse and I will go to my desktop. And yes, my file is here. See data1.csv. I will open this and that's it. Now I will tell you about all these fields. For now, let me keep everything as it is. And I will go and create a thread group because now I need to refer the values. So I will create a thread group and inside the thread group, I am going to create uh, some sampler. Uh, let me say I will create a Java request, a very simple sampler just to show you the data referencing. And I will also add a listener to check the results. I will add view results tree listener. Now to refer the values from CSV file, let me say step number four refer values from csv file using syntax dollar 
and in curly brackets give the variable name and I should also highlight this all these notes will be available in the description below this video so now here I can refer the variables from CSV anywhere in my request and just for this demo what I'm going to do is in the name of this Java request in the name field I will just refer the variables so that I can know if the reference is proper and is correct so let me say something here I will say request and I'm giving a underscore and the syntax is dollar and then curly brackets and inside the curly brackets I will give the variable name so the variable name that is coming from our CSV file is first name so I will say first name here and then I will again give a colon uh, I will give a underscore I can also give a space that does not matter I will again say dollar and in curly braces or curly brackets I will give the other variable that is last name so this is how you can refer so basically this is what you need dollar and the variable name and you can use this at any position anywhere in your samplers the example I'm showing you may not be a very practical example but this is just for demo that this is how you can use it and wherever you want to use this variable in your request this is the syntax now I will save everything let me save this let me save this with the name csv dataset config itself and save it and now I will run it so let us see what happens now I'm going to run it so because we had a single iteration and a single user it has ran a single time and if you see here it has taken the request name by referring the first row the data from the first row from the csv file now let us say if I go to my thread group and make the number of threads as three or I can also make the loop count as three so that it runs three times and it should go to each row of my CSV file because in my CSV file I have three rows let me go and check again this is my CSV file and I have these three data sets Raghav Pal, John Roebling and Graham Bell I will go and again run my test plan from here I will clear everything and run again and let us see what happens and you can see here this time it has got data from all these three rows now let us come back to our csv dataset config and understand the rest of the fields now we have file encoding here and by default it is empty but if you want you can set the encoding to any of these and you can also edit and create your own encoding type and this will be required if you have some characters some data in your csv file that requires any of these encoding normally we can leave it blank but you can check with your team if you need any kind of encoding if you are not able to refer your data properly or there are some characters in your data that are not getting referenced properly you can check on this then we have variable names now if you see our csv file i have given the first row as the variable name or the header and i am using this as a variable name in my jmeter just in case you do not want to use this and want to give your own variable names you can give it here for example I can say here I can say f name comma l name and in this case this is what will get referred in variables so if I now go to my request and you can see I am referring first name last name if I go again and run this now I will save and run you will see now it is not getting referenced because now I will need to use here instead of first name last name I will have to use F name and L name so this is what is if you want to give your own variables here let me remove it for now then here we have ignore first line in case you want to use your own variables and do not want to use the first line as header line you can make it as true but in our case I have kept it false because I want to use the first row here as a header row and I'm also getting my variables from here so I have also not given anything in the variables field here then we have delimiter now if you are using a CSV file the default delimiter is a comma and that is why it is called CSV that is 
comma separated values but just in case you are using any other character for separating your data or being used as delimiter like a tab you can always give it here and you can use anything here it is an editable field it is not a drop down now if you want to allow quoted data you can make it true false or you can also edit it so if you want to use something of your own you can do it here so i will say true so this is to allow csv data values to have to be quoted then we have recycle on end of file and by default it is true what this means is suppose i have three data sets in my csv and i go to my gmeter and in the thread group let us say i give number of threads as four or i can also give the loop count or iteration as four and then if i save and run it now you can see i have said recycle on end of file true so what happens is it will run three times with the three sets of data and then it will recycle that is it will go back to the first row or the first data set so that is why it has gone to the first data set again after reaching the end of file then we have stop thread on end of file and it is by default false if you make it true as soon as the last data set is executed it will stop the thread then we have sharing mode so in case you want to share this csv data file with all the threads in this test plan you can say all threads or just the current thread group or the current thread or you can also give your own values here so by default it is all threads so i will say step number five will be run and validate and you can check if you are getting all your data referenced properly from a csv file and this is how you can read and get data from a csv file in jmeter i hope this was useful for you thank you for watching